Okay, I want to go over triangles with you guys. It's a real popular shape on the SAT. you got to know the ratios, especially for the, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90. Uh, we're going to do one for the 30, 60, 90. So we're on page 953. This is number 15. It says in the figure above, EBCD is a square, and AE equals 8. What is the area of EBCD? So they're looking for the area of the square. Okay, so we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle here. If this is 90 and that's 60, by default, that has to be 30. So that's 30 degrees. All right, when you get a 30, 60, 90, this is what you're going to write on your paper. 30, 60, 90. And the ratio is x to x radical 3 2x. That's in the beginning of the section, but I was never a big fan of having students flip back and forth and waste time, and you really should know this. Okay, so try and memorize that. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug in the values. So we know that opposite 30 degrees is the length 8. So we go back to here, opposite 30. So that means x equals 8. Well, if x equals 8, opposite 60 degrees is 8 radical 3, and opposite 90 degrees is 2 times 8, or 16. So we can fill those in. Opposite the 90 is 16. Opposite the 60, 8 radical 3. So we know that side is 8 radical 3. Well, they tell us it's a square, right? So that means all the sides are 8 radical 3. So we can fill that in real quick. And they want to know the area. Well, all the area is of a square is base times height. Length times width, the same thing. So let's do that. 8 radical 3 times 8 radical 3. When you multiply with radicals, you multiply what's in the front first. So 8 times 8, 64. Radical 3 times radical 3, you just get back 3. All right, and we're going to do 64 times 3. I got my calculator here, so I'll just plug it in. 64 times 3, and we get a hundred and ninety two. That's your answer. So really the main thing, know your ratios for the 30, 60, 90. Alright, so we're on page 888. This is number five. Uh, it's a triangle question. In the figure above, the perimeter of the triangle is 4 plus 2 radical 2. What is the value of x? Okay, so before we go, you know, using Pythagorean theorem and doing anything like that, let me ask you, what type of triangle is this? All right, so how do you know what type this is? Well, two sides are equal. Well, if that's equal to that side, this angle is equal to that angle. So anytime you have a 90 degrees and two sides are equal, or two angles are equal by default, it's a 45, 45, 90. Now, why is that helpful? I mean, maybe some of you guys are off to the races and, and doing Pythagorean theorem to find out the hypotenuse. But I'll just show you a nice little trick. Uh, in a 45, 45, 90, when you have a leg, you can multiply by radical 2 to get the hypotenuse. So you'll multiply the leg by radical 2 to get the hypotenuse. When you have the hypotenuse, what do you think you're going to do to get a leg? You're going to divide by radical 2. So you divide the hypotenuse by radical 2 to get a leg. So let's use that to our advantage. If our leg here is x, what do we do to get the hypotenuse? Multiply by radical 2. So that has to be x radical 2. Alright, so we avoided using Pythagorean theorem. Now let's figure out what's our perimeter in this triangle. x plus x, I'll write it out, plus x radical 2. Let's combine like terms. That's 2x plus x radical 2. And they're telling us that that perimeter has to be equal to 4 plus 2 radical 2. So I'm just going to write it under. 4 plus 2 radical 2. And at this point, it's pretty easy to see what does x equal. x equals 2. Okay? So this is one way of kind of avoiding Pythagorean theorem and wasting time with calculations. Just know when you have a leg, you multiply by radical 2 to get the hypotenuse. All right, when you have the hypotenuse, you can divide by radical 2 to get the leg. And again, this only works in 45, 45, 90 triangles. 
Okay, this is an average question. Uh, I picked this question because you're, uh, you're going to see at least one or two questions on averages on the test. So you have to be really comfortable with the average formula. Uh, so we're going to do an easy one first, and we'll do a harder one, and I'll show you how the average formula can help you for both. Uh, so we're on page 786. This is number 6. If the average of 6, 6, 12, 16, and x is equal to x, what is the value of x? So first thing we should know, and I'll write it down here, is our average formula. So average is equal to the sum of the parts divided by the number of parts. So all we're doing is we're plugging in. So it says the average of all this and x is equal to x. So the average is equal to x. Now let's do our sum. 6 plus 6 plus 12 plus 16 plus x. How many things do we have? How many parts? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so at this point, that should cross multiply. Okay, so x times 5, we get 5x. We're going to add up all this. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 plus 12, 24. 24 plus 16, 40 plus x. Okay, so we've cross multiplied. Now let's solve for x. We'll minus an x from both sides. And we get 4x equals 40. Divide by 4. These cross out. And we get x equals 10. Choice D. So this is how the average formula can help you for an easy question. Again, you just, you just plug in. Let's check out and see how it helps you in a harder question. So our harder average question is on page 732. This is number 11. Let's take a look. When the sum of a list of prices is divided by the average arithmetic mean of the prices, the result is K. What does K represent? So real quick, just to let you know, when it says arithmetic mean, that's the same thing as average, so don't worry about that. Okay, so we're dealing with an average question, right? Let's write our average formula. So average equals the sum of parts divided by the number of parts. And that's going to help us out. So what is our goal here? What are we looking for? When the sum of a list of prices is divided by the average, the result is K. So we're looking for, our goal is to get sum divided by average. That's what equals K. So let's see if we can get sum over average. And we're going to do that by using our formula here. So we can put average over 1, and now we're going to cross multiply. So we'll get the sum of parts equals average times the number. So average times, and I'm just going to write number here, but we know that's the number of parts. So again, what's our goal? To get sum over average. Well, we've got sum of parts. Let's divide both sides by the average. Okay, so I'm going to divide both sides by the average. That crosses out. And what do I get? I'll just simplify here, but you guys can probably already see it. Sum of parts divided by average equals what? The number. Or the number of parts. Which one is that? We go to our choices. Choice D, the number of prices.